I just got something from our sponsors at KEH. KEH camera. Sure, you can take great pictures with your A1 and your R5, but can you do it with budget gear? You each have $1,000 to spend on cameras and lenses at sdp.io slash budget KEH. Then we're putting you through a series of challenges to see who's the better photographer. Good luck. A thousand bucks. You think we can even get decent gear for oh, yeah, I That's do. That's body and lens. Tony, we can do it. But good luck to you, sir. You're up against a formidable opponent. <laughs> I probably want to go with an older DSLR because the auto focusing system will be better and they'll get more bang for my buck. I want to keep it affordable, so I'm going to go to price ascending and start with the bargain gear. You can get a camera for $63? Holy moly. Now, these are really good deals, but I want something with higher resolution. So I'm seeing some like 15 megapixel cameras, but there's also cameras that are like a 24 megapixel camera. So I want to find something full frame with a little bit higher resolution, like 24 megapixels. I'm gonna go with the D600. Hmm, they have one that's excellent for 558, but I want a bargain. So I think I'm gonna go with this one that's like $440. Now I'm gonna pick out some lenses. Again, I'm looking for a bargain, but I want something that's gonna be sharp. And I'm looking for things that are kind of unique um, and have like a really big aperture, like maybe you want F14 or F28 so that we can fully utilize that full frame sensor. I'm gonna go a little more expensive than $9. All right, I got this Tamron 35 millimeter F1.8 lens. It has autofocus and image stabilization. How much money you got left in your budget? Like $300 maybe? 200. Oh, and I also found this 105 F2.8, but it's only available on ugly in my budget. It says here that ugly means the equipment is rough with multiple impressions in the metal, excessive finish loss and brassing, that the glass will have marks. There's potential defects I can have, but I'm gonna take the risk. It's $164, adding it to the cart. Okay, that puts my total at $969.69, but I'm gonna use our discount code T and C shop. And that saved me $48. Okay, get out of the way, my turn. <laughs> I agree, DSLRs are the best value here. I am going to try to find a cannon. The hand is on the face. This is harder than the elder Northrop had realized. Oh my God. They have full frame cameras for like $207. I know. That's a 1DS. That's like the pro body. Yeah, I know. I think that's what I want. Okay. Wait, it's $200? Yeah. Oh, shoot. You're going to rock me with your glass. This particular copy is missing the battery. <laughs> But I can buy a new battery. It's like $25. It's only 11 megapixels, but, but it's a pro body. So the autofocus system, all that's going to be spot on. So you're going with autofocus over resolution? Autofocus and good lenses. I'm saving my budget for good quality glass. I'm going to try to find pro L glass. Okay, I found it. It's the Canon 7200 F4 LIS Pro Image Stabilization and... I can get an ugly copy for 385 bucks. I can spend another $408. Okay, I think I got a, another L lens, Pro lens, a Canon 28 to 70 F2.8. Like this is wedding portrait photographer, Pro glass, ugly for $440. So let's talk about your strategy. You're going double ugly on the glass. <laughs> yes, but it's all professional grade, so it should be pretty durable. I mean, it's a gamble because it's ugly, but if it doesn't, work out, then I can always return it to KEH because there's a return policy, yeah, like 14, 14 days. days. Yeah. yeah. And this puts me at $1,031, but You're gonna I have a coupon, coupon code, code and that'll give me under $1,000. $979. We'll order them and check back in a couple of days. It's always a good day when we get our KEH mail. Let's see how this turned out. Some of this gear was ugly because we had a really restrictive budget. So I don't know what it's going to look like. Yeah, we took risks. Hopefully they pay off. Whoa, it's a lot of it's stuff. It's really nicely packed. Ooh, look at this one. Wait. One Somebody of us, got a fancy case. I hope it's neat. 
The Canon 80-200 f2.8. That's mine. Oh, shoot. This is not actually the lens I originally ordered. I ordered the 7200, but then I decided to sleep on it and wait until the next morning to actually check out, and somebody else bought it. So like, if you're buying used stuff, just jump on it right away. You can always return it later. Oh, I know what this one is. This is a man's camera. Look at this huge one. Ooh. Oh, look at, how was this marked ugly? I know it was missing the battery, but this looks like it's in perfect condition. Let me see. Well, it's missing this one little thing. Oh, it's just missing a cover. Okay, yeah, but I thought I could than, replace that. Other than that, it looks really good. So this is my... Oh. oh my god, a 24 to 70. This looks pristine also. I cannot believe it. Wait, what's ugly about it? There's just a tiny bit of black color missing. A few scratches, but it looks fine. The optics look great. Oh, you finally found your camera. I got the Nikon D600, and this just has some normal wear on the bottom here. It feels like Christmas morning. My Tamron 35 millimeter F1.8. Oh wait, let me pull out my portrait lens. I got all L glass. Look at those red rings. You got nothing. You don't have a gold ring on yours? My mind is a gold ring. What does that even mean? I mean it's a pro. So for our next assignment, we have to get this gear ready and then go take some pictures and see who gets the better shot. Okay, now we're gonna do a portrait challenge and I chose to do it outside for a few reasons. One, this is a budget challenge. You might not have studio lights or a studio. Two, it's pretty easy to get a good shot when you're controlling the lighting. And three, this is like graduation, graduate outdoor photo season. So let's see what you can do with these budget lenses, budget bodies. Midday shoots are the worst, but that's always when clients try to schedule it. So let's deal with it. Okay. They still do this, right? Nope. Okay. Could you give me some variety? I'm trying to win. <laughs> okay. I'll even break up my good side for you. <gasps> oh my gosh, you were cheating. <laughs> So everything looks fine. The autofocus worked great. It wasn't difficult to get focus on the eyes. It's locking into place and the auto exposure looks good. Are you gonna, are you trying to make me go to the spot that I chose? Yeah, go to the spot. Cheating again. How'd your picture look? <laughs> Tell us you look lovely today. You think you're the only one with moves? Oh, look at me, I got a zoom. I can get half body, full body. Look at how small my screen is. It's very hard for me to determine whether or not anything is in focus. Let me put my Apple Watch next You need watch something for scale? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's roughly the size of an Apple Watch. That there's anything wrong with being small. Can I zoom? Oh, mine was really intuitive. Oh, mine's better. I genuinely don't know how to zoom. Have you tried these dials? How about this one? Oh, what about the display button? I can record voice memos, but I can't seem to zoom. Did Maybe you try I it? should have read the manual. Did you make a voice memo? Uh, make better camera choices. Maybe copy Chelsea. This is embarrassing. I have to reshoot because I forgot I don't have image stabilization. I'm used to having like two forms of image stabilization, but all my pictures were shaky because my shutter speed wasn't fast enough. I'm only giving my bad side. I learned that from watching you. Oh, listen to that super high frames per second. What is it, like five? <laughs> Probably more than you have. I filled up the buffer already. I had been shooting JPEG, but I switched to RAW. And now I can only take a handful of pictures before the buffer fills and I can't take any more pictures. And I've already missed a bunch of shots because of it. Now. With my Sony A1, I can shoot at 30 frames per second raw for like more than 100 photos consecutively. But this was made for film photographers first moving to the digital era. They were used to shooting 36 pictures and then changing film. So they didn't shoot hundreds of pictures at a time. If you do go back and get one of these pro bodies, be sure you're okay with a slower pace. Look, that red light means it's still writing pictures to the card. I overexposed my pictures because this camera doesn't have auto ISO. So I had to manually set the ISO and 
I did it wrong because I'm just out of practice. Like if you were a film photographer upgrading to your first digital body, which is what this is designed for, that wouldn't be a problem at all because film is always a fixed ISO. But for me, coming out of the luxury of the digital era, it's going to take some getting used to. Mine's clearly the better portrait camera because I can shoot horizontally or vertically, even though I forget that I can turn the camera. I didn't sideways. see you do that. I, I forgot, but I could. No, but also I have two card slots. I have one very large card slot, but my card <laughs> slot is bigger than both of your card slots combined. Point. That's not better. You're going to confuse people. Please, for the sake of education, explain to people that everything you chose is inferior. <laughs> <laughs> I was really happy with the performance of my older L zoom lens, but you can see shooting into heavily backlit conditions that the contrast was really low and that's why the picture looks pretty washed out. But still, despite backlighting and only 11 megapixels, the picture still turned out sharp enough to see the eyelashes. Chelsea got better results switching to her 35 millimeter and shooting a more modern wide angle portrait style. And I think I have to give her a point for finding the cutest subject. Both cameras produce professional results, shocking for the price point. But Chelsea's consumer grade focusing system just wasn't quite as accurate and it frequently missed focus. My 1DS was a little more precise because it was designed for professionals even though it's 20 years old. I also got bigger bokeh balls because I had the option to shoot at 200 millimeters and f2.8. An option that's really useful for portrait photographers might be shooting in cluttered environments. When the camera was off, Tony said that my camera felt better because he tried it. He that's said, true. Shoot, yours feels way better. <laughs> that's what he said. Okay, next challenge. Okay. We've entered the night. And this is the era of camera we actually learned night photography on. So it's a little bit nostalgic for us. If like wanting to yell and throw your camera in the river is nostalgic. No. It's this thing like focusing is so much harder than I remember. There's no live view. I can't see through the viewfinder much at all, especially since it's near the ground and at this weird angle. And so I just ended up looking at the focusing scale on the lens and putting it close to infinity and then hoping like, hope it's in focus. Yeah, but that's the experimentation I remember doing when I was learning. And it's the type of thing where once you know your gear, you're used to it and it's capable of taking great night photos. So the learning curve is a little steeper and a little different, but once you get used to it, it gets the job done. It's just more trial and error, but you're talking about this was a few hundred dollars instead of a few thousand dollars. I gotta say, Chels, you are winning this one because you have Live View and I don't. And Live View is like a must have feature. Maybe the super old pro body isn't the right choice for night photography. Another place you win is you have, you chose an F1.8 Prime and that's letting in more than twice as much light as my F2.8 Zoom. So my Zoom is more versatile, but since we're using the viewfinder to compose it, the brighter lens makes composing and focusing a lot easier. I made so many good choices and it was pretty lucky to be honest. <laughs> uh, make better camera choices. Maybe copy Chelsea. I mean, let's actually look at the pictures before I talk too much smack, okay? Perhaps surprising for their age, but both cameras produced images with plenty of dynamic range. Chelsea, however, forgot to turn off her stabilization and the lens creating shaky pictures because Here's the thing, third-party lenses often don't detect the tripod, and so they'll create shake when there is none. My lens is not stabilized, which this night turned out to be an advantage. But still, look at the detail I got out of an 11 megapixel camera. We are at the Connecticut College Arboretum to see who can take the best landscape photos. Mm -hmm. 
Hiking to our destination with my huge professional body, I definitely had to give Chelsea a point for having a lighter camera. We took identical pictures to test the actual image quality. And look, it's Connecticut. We're not gonna get some Ansel Adams in here. Chelsea's D600 on the right shows the benefit of being 10 years younger. Sensor technology was developing really fast. She has more dynamic range in the shadows. The 24 megapixels produced a sharper image that even my pro glass couldn't compete with. So this is a big point for Chelsea. She has better image quality. You, you got the newer camera at 10 years old, but I would still recommend the 20 year old, really inexpensive professional body to somebody who is starting a photography business, who wanted to work their way up. Because this immediately conveys professional photographer. Like people are impressed by the size of the camera. People comment on it. And that's actually a big part of the image of a photographer. I put more of my budget into the lenses which means I'll be able to hold onto these lenses longer. I can make a few bucks in my portrait photography business and then upgrade the body, but continue to use these lenses because these lenses, ugly or not, were perfect. My thought was that with 24 megapixels on my camera, you wouldn't be sacrificing any resolution. I didn't feel like I was ever held back with this. Am I a little spoiled from having the absolutely most expensive mirrorless camera? Yeah, because there are a few bells and whistles that that has that has just made the process more streamlined, a little faster, a little easier, but you could get everything done that that camera can do with this camera. Autofocusing, not as good, but you learn how to work with those things. So I was really happy with my choice. I would recommend this to people that are aspiring to be professionals, people that are learning photography and don't just wanna learn the basics, they wanna actually hone their craft a bit. Um, and for a $500 body, I thought this was a really great setup. So head to KEH at this link and do your shopping, find some really inexpensive gear. If for some reason you don't love it, you'll have 21 days to send it back and use this coupon code to save 5%. And in the comments down below, I'd like to hear what you think, what old gear is still usable today. And if you do have a limited budget, are you better off spending it on vintage 10 or 20 year old gear? Or would you rather get the cheapest brand new gear? For me, I would definitely recommend older used gear. Yeah, especially now. Thanks and bye. 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 Goodbye.